One of the core strengths of the PC platform is deciding how you want to play a game. Are you a big fan of 4K but have no problem with 30 FPS? Well, you can do it if you want. Do you like ultra precise controls and visual fluidity at 120 Hz or more with very low settings? Well, you can do that too. But what if you want to go beyond a game's in-game settings? Giving that game your own preferred aesthetic, or perhaps just making it generally better looking overall? Well, along come post-processing injectors, with Reshade by Crossire being the de facto one to go to. Reshade is essentially a real-time program for injecting and editing a whole host of community-developed post-processes into a game's EXE, affecting things like anti-aliasing, screen space ambient occlusion, and a number of other one-off unique effects. I find Reshade to be a fantastic tool for replays of older games, giving them a new twist or just generally improving some areas of the games that were perhaps lacking the first time around. So in today's video I will guide you real quickly through the setup of Reshade, coarsely detailing how it works, and showing off some common use cases to give you a sense of how you can take advantage of it for yourself. The way Reshade works is pretty simple. Basically it is based around the way Windows loads up programs. By utilizing specialized Direct3D or OpenGL.dll injector files, Reshade is able to load into the target program's memory at runtime and can also be modified in real time. Reshade is simply taking advantage of the intended open design of how EXE programs utilizing graphics libraries such as Direct3D or OpenGL work in Windows. But since it is still modifying the game, I do not recommend using Reshade necessarily in online games that have anti-cheat, as Reshade's use may trigger automatic protections there and earn you a ban you probably do not want. So definitely stick to older online games that don't have such anti-cheat measures or single player games with Reshade. The use of Reshade these days is much simpler than its original incarnations or the way people are generally used to tweaking graphics outside of a game menu. There are no real separate INI files here to fiddle around with if you do not want to. You just head on over to the reshade.me website, download the latest release, and run it from a directory of your choosing. I recommend its own folder in your main C Windows directory to avoid any potential problems with Windows permissions. After double clicking on the setup exe, it prompts you to select the API the target game uses and to seek out the game's exe located on your PC. Here the exe will likely be in a folder under program files or in the Steam, Steam apps common folder if you have the game on Steam. Since Reshade requires an EXE, that means it will not work on UWA or Universal Windows apps games. As if we needed another reason to not be too fond of that distribution platform. Well anyway, while knowing a game's graphics API may be an intuitive question for some, this is not exactly always common knowledge. And in case you do not know the game's graphics API, it is best to go to the PC Gaming Wiki website, looking up the game and finding out its graphics API there. Please note here though that Reshade will really only work with modern versions of OpenGL or DirectX games from the DX9 to DX11 era. If the game is old enough to be DX8, you can download the separate D3D8 to 9.dll file from the Reshade website and then drop that into the game directory where the game's exe is so you can use the DX9 Reshade plugin. After you've added the game exe and selected the proper API, the Reshade setup will prompt you to download a standard library of effects. Here simply click yes and leave them all checked and continue. If it all works like it should, you will see a installing to dot 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 succeeded message in the left hand corner of the setup box. With this, Reshade is ready for use in game. From here you just load up the game as you normally would. And you can already see right away that Reshade is functioning as this loading tip will show up after the game is being started. After loading into the game you can hit shift plus F2 to open up the in-game Reshade menu. Then it is as simple as following the on-screen tutorial instructions, creating a preset name, and then scrolling down the list of downloaded shader files to select the one you want. Here in this case I select SMAA. It should automatically apply after selecting, but there's no harm in reloading the effect to ensure it's properly injected. Then you simply hit shift plus F2 again and you can play the game to your heart's content. It's really that simple. In terms of using it after you've set it up, I think one of the most common and sensible uses for most games is the injection of a post-process anti-aliasing filter. 
It makes sense to use injected post-process AA when a game does not ship with any form of anti-aliasing at all, like here in Red Faction Guerrilla Remastered. In its current post-release state, it does not have any AA options to toggle in the menu. And as you can see at 1080p here, SMAA does a pretty good job of cleaning up the jaggies in comparison to the default image. It also makes sense to use an injected post-process AA when the game's anti-aliasing is merely okay, but when you would like to see better edge coverage, perhaps. A good example here would be The Witcher 3, I think, where its temporal anti-aliasing is okay at cleaning up some of the shimmer the game has, but is generally not very aggressive. Here using SMAA on top of that TAA produces noticeably superior results. And lastly, I think it makes sense to use post-process AA when a game has problems with downsampling or other driver-level supersampling options. Here I specifically mean those games whose UIs and HUDs are made with bitmap image elements at a fixed resolution. So you scaling up the resolution causes the HUD to become small and largely unreadable. A great example here is Deus Ex Human Revolution, where upping the resolution has a negative side effect of making the game's HUD smaller and smaller. As covered in the Tech Focus anti-aliasing video, this SMAA and FXAA is being applied upon a single frame and in a post-process manner, so it is a bit limited in its effectiveness. It is also applied after all the game's rendering has been done and the HUD has been rendered, so you will see the HUD and menu elements of a game being affected by the anti-aliasing or any other post-process you inject. That is of course not too bad when you consider the positive effect it has on the important thing, that is the game graphics itself. And in terms of performance, while SMAA and FXAA are really rather cheap to run on modern GPUs these days, so it should not be a big worry for those of you who want to inject them into modern games even. But still, for the curious among you, in comparison to native implementations of SMAA 1X and FXAA in Crisis 3 at 1080p with a GTX 1070, I saw the injected reshade version of SMAA a 1x running worse by a mere 0.21 milliseconds, or 2.1% worse in comparison to the native implementation. FXAA at 1080p likewise ran worse by 0.43 milliseconds, or around 4.5%. So the injected versions with their default settings are a bit more expensive than a good native implementation as shown here in Crisis 3 but it's not so much more expensive to the point where it should affect your decision to use it in games that have poor choices for anti-aliasing anyway. Beyond injecting post-process anti-aliasing into a game, there are many other ways to spice up an older game's graphics if you have the GPU power to spare. Coming back to Deus Ex Human Revolution here, for example, when I played the game originally years ago, I remembered it having a serious amount of color banding. You know where you can see the individual shades of colors switch in a surface, producing distinct visible lines. By utilizing the rather expensive debanding shader, you can clear up a good amount of the game's color banding. Here in the comparison, you can see how the obvious bands and lines where the color gradient changes are softened or eliminated completely through an intelligent dither of sorts. This is a pretty great way to play the game in 2018 again, where you can spend that excess GPU power to eliminate nuisances like this. Going to its sequel, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, I always thought the default sharpening filter that shipped with the game was way too heavy. At the same time, turning it off left the game being a bit too soft at 1080p with the TAA being turned on. But by utilizing Reshade's injected Luma Sharpen shader, among other sharpening shaders you can use, it is possible to take back a bit of that softness without going overboard leaving haloing or ringing artifacts around objects on screen. Beyond usages like this, you can also play older games that had rather limited post-processing suite on release with a fresh coat of next-gen paint by utilizing Bloom, Film Grain, or other effects to change up the game's look. A good example here I think is Wolfenstein The New Order, which at the time of its release was not exactly the prettiest game due to its id Tech 5 roots. But with a bit of bloom and a light touch of saturation, hey, that looks pretty okay. Or you can play a game with a specific tone that you've played multiple times, cranking up those post-process settings to amplify it, making it a unique playthrough with a different mood. Take Resident Evil 4 here, for example, here being played with the amazingly well-crafted and highly recommended RE4 HD texture and model pack. The game is bleak, filmic, and full of tension. Why not try playing up that mood with a desaturated or completely black and white color palette, complete with some film grain or other filmic effects? Pretty neat, right? 
Beyond these more simple post-process options, there are also some more complex shaders for those of you out there who like to tweak. By accessing a game's depth buffer so that Reshade can get an idea of the 3D space in the game world, it's possible to inject more complex effects like depth of field and screen space ambient occlusion. Though it should be said here that the post-process depth of field with Reshade is applied in a rather blind manner, so it may not interact nicely with HUDs and menu elements in games. Even then, it's pretty great for applying that cinematic look to screenshots or for a HUD-less playthrough of a game. But next to anti-aliasing, being able to inject screen space ambient occlusion is probably the most transformative effect Reshade can add into a game. It may not always be possible due to the way the game engine is set up and the way Reshade interacts with it, but when it does work, man, it can really look fantastic. Injecting the default MXAO is great for those games that are either too old to have shipped with screen space ambient occlusion, for those games where SSAO was not exactly great on release. Take for example here the fantastic Black Mesa, the Source Engine remake of Half-Life by the Crowbar Collective. The version of the Source Engine here does not really have any SSAO at all, but injecting it into the game with reshade leads to some transformative results. Now nooks and crannies in the game world are filled with more realistic shading. Objects are more situated and look less like they are floating on top of the game world. It gives that extra level of depth to a game where it was more or less flat shaded with no differentiation in shadowed regions. You can even go deeper into this reshade rabbit hole if you like. There are non-standard effects made by community users and contributed on the reshade forms. All you need to do is go to the form, copy the shader code text into your own .fx file made with notepad, and then drop it into the reshade shader folder in the game directory. There are a wealth of unique effects and tweaks available there. For example, I like playing older games at incredibly high frame rates and injecting in a post-process accumulation motion blur that was created by the user Shoulder XX. You can just turn it on without tweaking and wham! All of a sudden you're playing a game like Halo Combat Evolved or Painkiller with a rather convincing motion blur effect that applies to all screen elements. But as mentioned in the tech focus video here for motion blur, this requires a frame rate in excess of 300 to 500 FPS, perhaps even 1000 FPS to really look plausible, and it may require a bit of tweaking to look perfect. But hey, if you have a Core i7 Titan X Beast Machine, why not try playing Halo with per object motion blur? How neat is that? So yeah, Reshade can have a transformative effect on a game's graphical presentation and is not too hard to set up. All the effects and games I have mentioned in this video are just some of the many ways you can choose to use Reshade. And like the best things on PC, it is your choice to mix and match those effects you find best. And if you are already interested in tweaking a game's graphics, then utilizing Reshade is just one step further that takes less than five minutes really today. Before this video does come to an end here though, I would like to extend my appreciation to all the contributors to Reshade over the years, as it is a pretty amazing community effort. Also, the current UI and installation process is super intuitive and simple, so cheers. But what do you think? Are there any specific Reshade tweaks you think have made a game look that much better? Write in the comments below, as I'm always keen to playing an older game with a new look. And with that being said, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and feel confident enough now to use Reshade as it really isn't all that complex. If you did enjoy what you saw and found it informative, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, hit that little bell button in the corner to be notified as soon as we post a video. If you would like to talk to me about Reshade tweaks and such, follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. As always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.